So this is uh, the second video I'm doing on the theme of uh, Awake in the Wild. So in this video I'm going to do a reflection on the, the five elements of earth, water, fire, air and space. So I've come to uh, the Homecoming Wood, which is about a mile from where I stay in Calendar, and it's on the Great Trossachs Path, which goes from Calendar into the heart of the Trossachs and the lochs and the woods of the Trossachs. And this area is the site of a woodland trust uh, development where they've uh, planted uh, native trees here. And this particular bench is situated in a little sea of uh, gorse bushes so the fragrance is really quite wonderful that fragrance of coconuts you get from uh, gorse bushes so now I'm going to go up the hill behind me to uh, Samson stone uh, to talk about the earth element So welcome to Samson Stone, this massive boulder. Uh, so I've had to change lenses, put a wide angle lens on to get it all in, but also I wanted to show some of the context around here. So you'll see over in the corner, in the left hand corner is Loch Venica, more in the distance, which is where I shot the photography video about a month ago. And then behind me here is the hill of Ben Ledy which is three miles away. So, there's a local legend to how this stone got to be here, and it was of a boulder throwing competition by some Fingalian warriors. And apparently it was a strength competition to see who could throw a boulder the furthest. Well, the winner was Samson and this was a stone he threw and it said that he threw it all the way from the top of Ben Ledy over there so he threw this three miles which I think you'll agree is pretty damn impressive there's actually another legend or version of a legend which says he threw it from Ben Lawyers and Ben Lawyers is 20 miles away so well that's something else isn't it uh, of course there is the scientific explanation Prefer, and the scientific explanation is that it's a glacial erratic uh, which was deposited here the end of the last ice age 10,000 years ago. So the earth element uh, in Buddhism is associated with certain qualities. Qualities like unshakability, immovability, with strength, with presence and often we use uh, the symbol of earth uh, element in meditation so often in meditation I use the image of a mountain and I imagine like I sit like a mountain so sitting like a mountain is imagining that you have a sense of groundedness so in sitting like a mountain you can imagine that you grow roots into the earth yeah? so you get this quality, this feeling of being rooted and when you have a sense of being rooted then you just feel more strength uh, and more this sense of unshakability whatever arises you can sit there with it and this is an important quality to cultivate in meditation is to be able to sit and meditate with whatever experience arises with this sense of groundedness rootedness this sense really that we're giving ourselves to the earth we're feeling the support of the earth and with the support of the earth then we can accept and turn towards whatever arises 
in meditation practice. So whatever arises in meditation, well it can be deep feelings can arise, hindrances and difficulties can arise, fear can arise, lots of thoughts can arise, but if we're grounded then we can sit and absorb and accept whatever is coming up in our practice. And this is very helpful in helping us assimilate and process and deal with uh, our experience. And it's a stage of meditation that's called integration, integrating whatever arises. So having the presence of the earth element and the support of the earth element is very helpful in our meditation practice. So that's the earth element so I'm going to move on from the earth element now and we're going to now explore the water element. So I'm going to go to a place called the Lenny Falls which is about two miles from here. Uh, so I'll see you there. So here we are at the Falls of Lenny, uh, about a couple of miles from my home in Calendar. So the Falls of Lenny lie on a stretch of water called the Garav Ushku. Apologies to the Gaelic scholars out there, because I'm sure I've pronounced that wrong. But the Garav Ushku uh, translates as the rough water, which is particularly appropriate for the falls here. I mean, we've not had much rain in the past month, so they're much uh, less water here than there usually is. But I'm sure you can well hear them uh, in, well, not the background, they're almost like in the foreground of the sound here. I'm having to kind of raise my voice a bit to make sure the microphone's picking me up. So, yeah, the Garab Ushku. Uh, it's a particularly attractive stretch of river. Uh, this time of year you can see here the trees are just coming into their uh, spring greenness so uh, yeah it's a beautiful scene here sitting uh, by the river and I've come here to talk about the second great element which is the water element so one of the main qualities of water is the quality of uh, fluidity so fluidity is constant flow and water here suddenly exhibiting that. So in Celtic uh, mythology, uh, bodies of water like this, rivers, particularly deep pools and rivers, and lochs, even small lochs, are home to uh, kelpies. Yeah. So kelpies are horse spirits, which are actually shapeshifters, so they can transform into human beings. And if you go by the old stories, the main purpose seems to be uh, to try and drown unwary passing uh, human travellers. Uh, so they either entice people or drag them into these deep pools, drown them, and then apparently sometimes eat them. So yeah, uh, kelpies. Uh, though they look beautiful, apparently they're a very beautiful black horse. Uh, they're, uh, well, very dangerous, yeah. One way of telling them, by the way, if you meet a black horse by the river, is that the hooves are turned the other way. So that's a sure giveaway of a kelpie. So yeah, uh, Celtic mythology is a bit like this. We've got this beautiful landscape, the beautiful rivers and the lochs, but there's a dark side there, yeah and the dark side dwells maybe deep in the woods 
deep in the lochs or deep in the rivers. So in Buddhism, uh, the animal we have associated, or the spirit we have associated with uh, water, is uh, the Naga. So the Naga is a serpent spirit, yeah? or sometimes they're half human, uh, half serpent. And Naga is a very powerful creature, so they're not to be trifled with. Sometimes they look a bit like dragons when you see the, the pictures of them. So yeah, they embody a lot of energy, a lot of power in them. But often in Buddhism, they have a positive role. They're often portrayed as guardians. Uh, they might guard a spiritual treasure. Uh, they might guard a, a spiritual realm. Or they might look over or look uh, guard uh, a spiritual practitioner. So yeah, powerful creatures, but often with a positive purpose. So the water element in Buddhism is associated with qualities like purification, with calmness, with clarity. And I think these uh, symbolic qualities are uh, fairly self-evident, so I'm not going to go into them. So the water element in Buddhism is also associated with uh, spiritual potentiality, yeah. uh, with latent energy or undiscovered energy. And we see this in uh, some Buddhist, Buddhist symbolic uh, monuments like the stupa. And these monuments have as a large part of them a huge dome. And this dome is a symbol of the potentiality. Uh, of the of the water element so this is potentiality which can be activated by spiritual practice in dreams uh, we find that water is symbolic of these deep latent energies and when these deep latent energies are stirred then we often can have water dreams this is certainly what I've found uh, when I've got something going on in my life and my emotions are rising up or I'm emotionally agitated or disturbed, I might have emotionally quite agitated dreams and the symbol is often of disturbed water or great waves of water. Uh, sometimes when I'm more deeply absorbed in meditation, like on meditation retreats, I often find water images occur then sometimes the water imagery might be calmer yeah, so there's a sense of very deep calm energy or sometimes there's uprising energy again so the water uh, dreams can be quite uh, dynamic uh, like huge waves or creatures uh, coming out of the depths so this is uh, water imagery in dreams symbolizing this arising uh, latent energy that we all have within us and of course a very important part of the Buddhist path is the accepting well first of all really is the stimulating then accepting and integrating of these energies so at some point in the, the Buddhist path we will meet our own inner Nagas we will meet our own inner Kelpies and it's a vital part of spiritual practice to actually not push these away but to actually turn towards them and integrate them own the energy that they uh, embody and as I said with the earth elements it's very helpful for us when things are arising when motions are arising, when deep energies are arising, that we're rooted and grounded in the earth element so we can hold and contain and integrate these energies just as the earth element here holds this river. Whatever amount of water is flowing down, the earth element will hold it. And the earth element will hold the deepest loch. It will hold the deepest ocean.